The typhoon is a symbol and instrument of Soviet naval power. At 48,000 tons submerged, the Projet 941 is a gargantuan submarine and the largest ever built. The typhoon's size resulted not simply from the Soviet's compulsion to build big ships, but also from specific mission requirements. During the Cold War, Soviet nuclear ballistic missile submarines prowled the frigid waters of the North Atlantic, where they were vulnerable to detection by NATO forces. As the ballistic missile these SSBNs carried achieved longer ranges, eventually they were able to remain in the safe confines of the Soviet-controlled Arctic Ocean, and still able to hit continental United States. Because these long-range nuclear missiles were very big, they required a big submarine to carry enough of them to allow a credible second strike. In very simple terms, this was how the typhoon was born. In the 1970s, the United States began to develop the Ohio-class SSBNs, armed with the powerful solid propellant ballistic missiles called the Trident I, and later the Trident II. The number of missiles carried on the Ohio class increased to 24 from only 16 on its predecessor. The number of independent re-entry vehicles, each carrying a nuclear warhead, was 8 to 12 units on each weapon. The Soviet Union basically had to respond to the Ohio class by creating a third-generation strategic missile submarine, which received the classification Project 941 Akula, meaning shark. This is not to be confused with the Project 971 nuclear attack submarine, which received the NATO reporting name Akula. The Project 941 SSBN was called the Typhoon by NATO. The Rubin Design Bureau in St. Petersburg was given the job of designing the Typhoon in 1972, and work on the complementary missile system began at the same time. The new R-39 ballistic missiles were enormous, weighing around 90 tons each. These were the biggest submarine-launched ballistic missile ever created, and the Typhoon was required to have 20 of them. This made the design process very difficult. The usual architecture of submarines at the time simply did not produce an acceptable design. More than 440 blueprints of the project were discarded for various reasons. A successful design appeared literally at the very last moment. The construction of the Typhoon was assigned to the Sefmash shipyard in the port city of Severodvinsk. Sefmash was the primary shipyard for nuclear submarine production in the Soviet Union, and is the only shipyard building nuclear submarines in the Russian Federation. It built all the Delta-class SSBNs, the Akula-class SSN, and the Titanium-hulled Sierra-class SSN. A total of six typhoons were built between 1976 and 1989. In fact, the lead boat was commissioned almost at the same time as the first Ohio-class SSBN of the U.S. Navy, in late 1981. By all accounts, the typhoons were extremely expensive to build and maintain. With the fall of the Soviet Union, the budget available for the Russian Navy shrunk drastically, and three typhoons were decommissioned throughout the 1990s, well before the end of their service life, in order to reduce maintenance expenses. Two other typhoons were decommissioned in the 2000s. In July 2022, there was rumor that the last typhoon has been decommissioned as well, but there are no confirmations. The final design called for the inclusion of two main pressure holes running from the stern to bow, and they ran parallel to each other. The 20 ballistic missile silos were located in the front half of the submarine. They were placed between the two primary pressure holes. This was basically unheard of at the time. The sail was placed further to the back, behind the missile silos. The submarine as a whole has five pressure holes in total throughout the boat, including the two big ones and three smaller ones. 
There are 19 compartments, including a strengthened module, which houses the main control room and the electronic equipment compartment. While the outer hull was built from high-strength steel, there are some reports suggesting the internal pressure hulls were made of titanium. The final design involved a length of 175 meters, and this is not actually much longer than most other SSBNs. But the Typhoon is a very wide submarine, with a width of 23 meters, more than double the US Los Angeles class SSN, for example. This enormous diameter is to accommodate, well, basically everything the nuclear missiles, the multiple pressure holes, etc. Typhoon has four 533mm torpedo tubes and two 650mm torpedo tubes with a total of 22 anti-submarine missiles, torpedoes, and mines of varying types. The 650mm torpedo tubes can fire the 533mm weapon if needed, including the Type 53 series of torpedoes. One boat, the Dmitry Donskoy, has been refitted with an additional 12 533mm torpedo tubes mounted in arc formation outside the pressure hull. These are used to fire anti-torpedo decoys. In the bow, mounted just below the torpedo tubes, is the massive MGK-500 SCAT bow sonar. This is a cylindrical sonar with both active and passive sonar capabilities, which is complemented by passive flank sonar arrays just behind the nose. The rear section of the submarine also mounted not one, but two towed array sonars. Soviet doctrine for submarine-based nuclear deterrence evolved very differently to that of the United States in both weapons design and deployment. The Soviet fleet of SSBNs progressed logically towards their concentration within the relatively secure waters of the Arctic Ocean and the Northern Pacific, where they would be protected from NATO anti-submarine forces. The Typhoon class was designed to patrol under the Arctic ice, hidden from all enemies and able to punch a hole through the surface ice and unleash apocalypse at the Americans should the need arise. After leaving base to go on patrol, the Typhoon would choose a desirable ice layer to hide under. The Typhoon is designed to be able to surface through a layer of ice about 2-3 to three meters thick. So ice up to 2 meters thick is preferred for hiding under. The submarine's design includes features for traveling under ice and ice breaking. On the stern, the Typhoon has a large horizontal hydroplane fitted alongside the propeller. The nose horizontal hydroplanes are retractable and will be retracted when undergoing ice breaking. The sail has a reinforced cover for ice breaking. The Typhoon has been tested to a maximum depth of 900 meters. Speed is 22 knots when surfaced and 27 knots submerged. She can spend 120 days at sea without resupplying. Late Soviet SSBNs carried long-range nuclear missiles, including on the Delta classes and the Typhoon class, which can be launched from the Arctic or the Sea of Okhotsk in the Northern Pacific. These areas were informally referred to as bastions, where Soviet naval forces and land-based aviation can prevent NATO forces from entering, in turn providing protection for Soviet SSBNs. The Typhoon carried, or used to carry, 20 R-39 RIF submarine-launched ballistic missile, aka the SSN-20 Sturgeon. The R-39 is a three-stage projectile powered by a solid propellant rocket engine. The two rows of missile launch tubes are situated in front of the sail. Range is 8,300 kilometers with an accuracy of 500 meters. 
which means the typhoon can hit the entire continental United States from the safety of its own naval base in the Arctic. Each missile consists of ten independently targetable multiple reentry vehicles, each carrying a 100 kiloton nuclear warhead. This means that when fully armed, the typhoon carries 200 nuclear warheads. Which can basically destroy 200 major cities. So a single typhoon has the potential to completely annihilate any country on Earth. The typhoon class caused such a great resonance and concern in the United States that led to the signing of the second Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty with the Soviet Union and negotiations on further limitation of strategic weapons. The Typhoon class also hit the Guinness Book of Records, both for their gargantuan size and destructive potential. That said, the SSN-20 ballistic missiles have been withdrawn from service, and currently Russian SSBNs use the ISM-56 Bulava, aka the SSN-32. In 2005, the Typhoon successfully test-fired. The new Bulava missiles, like many Soviet submarines, there are two nuclear reactors. Each of the OK-650 pressurized water reactors can generate 190 megawatts of thermal power, and are used to drive steam turbines, which in turn drive the seven-bladed screw-back propellers. The Soviet submarine reactors are relatively small. And the large diameter hull of the Typhoon allows a hull deck level above the reactors. Outside the hull, large water scoops feed the secondary loop of a natural circulation cooling system, which eliminates the need for noisy pumps when the submarine is operating at slow speeds. Two diesel generators serve as backup propulsion units and are coupled to the shaft line. Natural circulation, together with the anechoic rubber tiles covering the boat and the slow-turning shrouded propellers, make the Typhoon much quieter than previous generation of Soviet SSBNs. Finally, the Typhoon actually has very good living quarters and amenities for the crew, and I'm talking about everyday sailors, not just officers. Nicknamed the Floating Hilton because accommodation was so good, crew members can expect luxuries not always found on Soviet-built nuclear submarines. Much of the walls inside the boat are wooden, as opposed to cold metal or plastic, giving the boat a more homely feel. Even more than that, there is a gym on board, similar to U.S. Navy SSBNs. And the crew can get a full workout. There is even a small swimming pool. Yes, an indoor swimming pool underwater, albeit a very small one. And to finish it all off, there is a sauna to rejuvenate the body. So during their time off duty, the crew can get a full workout, a swim, a sauna, and a warm shower, in the correct order, of course. To finish, here's some footage of Russian sailors living their life aboard the Typhoon. Please enjoy. Mm -hmm. 